Hey guys, Fabuliki here today and welcome to episode 9 of Redstone Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at T flip-flops. And that is another type of logic gate, which is a little bit more advanced, but at the same time is still as easy to understand as the others when it's explained to you. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to build it. I'm not going to explain it while I'm building it, and I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean by it. It's probably going to look a bit weird when I've built it, but once I explain it, you'll understand exactly what's going on and why it works. So... I'm just not telling you what it's doing right now for a reason. I'm going to grab a button and then we're done. I'm just going to chuck it. No, I'll chuck it over here. That makes more sense. So if I hit this button, you'll see something cool happen. See, now that's off. If I hit it once more, it'll turn on. So basically, the, the button has become a toggle for this redstone line here. So it's not like the, like a normal button, what it would do. I'll just demonstrate over here. A normal button, if I hit it, it turns on, then it turns off. Turns on, then it turns off. But... With this button here, this will toggle this on and off. So if we hit that, it will go off. If hit that again, it will go on. So, a T flip-flop is a logic gate that is basically, a it's like a memory unit, essentially. When you give it an input, it will save it. And then, essentially, it, it's not really, um, an RS null latch is more of a, a memory unit. But this is kind of a really simplified one in the fact that if I hit this, it will change the state. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's kind of a simple way to explain it. Right, so now I'll explain why this works. We'll, we'll, we'll go over here, we'll demonstrate what happens with a sticky piston first, just to show you a little... This is a neat way to uh, toggle a circuit. So what we're going to do, we're going to get a piston, a sticky piston here, and I'll put that block back. One block away from it, we're going to dig down and place a torch. And we put a block in front of the sticky piston like this, and then we can have redstone coming out of it. If we now activate this piston, what you'll see happen is this block now covers up that torch and powers the redstone. Because we know that a torch underneath a block will power it. Oh, not there. On top of that. It powers this block. We know that because we've done that before. So that's what's happening over here. The piston has pushed the block on top of the torch and is powering this redstone. But as soon as we take this away, it'll turn that off. And something really simple you can do with this is a one-time use switch. Someone actually um, inboxed me about this. Um, and what this is going to do... Because they wanted a switch that would only activate once. As in, once it's turned on, you can't turn it off, but you have to manually reset it. So, how we're going to do this is quite simple. We're just going to have a little loop going around here. So we now hit this pressure plate. And now this will never go off. This will always stay on. Because what's happened is once we've pressed this, the block has powered this redstone, which is now powering the piston. So it's basically a loop that's not going to break unless you break it. So that's what's happening there. And when we put it back, it just resets it. So this is a way to make a switch that is one-time use. Right, so now that we know that we can power redstone with a, a piston and a block, we can apply that over here. Because what's happening, and let me just replace this, what's happening over here is, I'll rebuild it again so we can sort of work through it together. Um, we're using two ordinary pistons this time, just like this, two facing each other, and if we just extend them like that, um, they just extend like that. Um, and we just push a, a single block between them. And it's going to push it over this. So you can see if we do it manually right now, um, it will activate that. But we need to push the block back again. Uh, and the way we do that is just like we've done over there. We place two blocks above, one torch above this piston so it activates, and one above this. We then place redstone to connect the two. And our input is here where this button goes. Um, and then when we hit this, it turns... The torch is off on both sides, if you go here you can see it. And it will just switch um, between the pistons. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it switches. Like, I know if we go like this real quick. If we do it like this without the block, you can see they both go like that. Um, they both go out and then back in again. Which makes sense, because the torches go off and come back on again. Um, but I'm not exactly sure why it causes the block to switch. Um, but I guess that that's not really going to matter if you need to use this. So... If we want to use this input practically, we just get rid of the button because we're not going to want to press a button every time. Well, we are, but not right there. Um, so we'll create a line for the redstone to come down, just like this. Just like this. Oh, God, what am I doing? <laughs> just like this. And we'll have a button not there, there, on this block. And we'll have our, our output coming out over here, just like this. And we'll put a door, an iron door, because you can't open those without redstone. So we'll chuck this right here. Now if we press this button, we'll see that our door will open and it'll stay open until we hit the button again. So that is your T flip-flop. 
And that's how it works. Now I'll show you something I've done over here uh, on this one. So I've used a T flip flop to open these pistons, um, these piston doors, which is sometimes what people ask about how you can have a button on the outside to open it and one on the inside to open it and close it. Um, so basically, if I stand on these, it's going to open it eventually. Unless I disconnected it. Oh, no, there we go, sorry. <laughs> right, so it's open there, and it's going to stay open until I hit these again. Because um, right now, with the T-flip-flop, we can open and close it from both sides. Um, later on, we'll go over how to just open and just close it from either side. But right now, if I stand on these again, it's going to close. But if I stand on these again, it'll open. And when I come over here, I put, I put pressure plates over here to close it. And I'll just close it up. So, you can see my T flip flop down here, it's exactly the same as the one we've built, um, which is actually way out over there, but it's the same as there. Um, same one we've built, but I've just chucked it under here and connected it up to our pressure plates on both sides. So you can see our, our input's coming, um, we can have obviously multiple inputs, one from there and one from over here. And then I've just powered uh, the, the piston doors from our output, which comes around up here and powers these three pistons and opens and closes them. So it's really simple. It's everything we've done before. It's going to make it daytime again. There we go. It's everything we've done before, and it's really simple to do. So I'm going to come over here real quick, and I'm going to attempt to run through these pistons, because I don't know, people people were wanting me to do it. It's not going to work, though. I tried it once before. I <laughs> It goes too fast. It doesn't work. Trust me. But people wanted to see it, so we're going to do it. I'm sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it actually does work. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. I could swear, I could swear I tried that multiple times and it didn't work. Let me, let me just do that one more time. Okay, you can stop watching now if, you, if you've learnt what you want to. Um, this is just me kind of mucking around, sorry. Alright. I think... Oh, 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 there it goes. I, I don't know... Uh, I don't know. Anyways, right, so that's the end of this episode, guys. I hope the, uh, the T flip-flop has helped you out um, and make some things that you want to make because the T flip-flop was actually one of the kind of the most useful basic uh, logic gates, essentially, because it's a, it's a toggle, and that's really useful. Um, anyways, guys, I'll see you again in the next episode of Redstone Tutorials, and thanks for watching.